You're such an asshole. That's what Consulting.com. If you got questions, Cappy's got answers as long as you got money. So don't fuck you. I didn't know you are going to charge me. It's happening again. <clears throat> it's happening. Where I send out people, hey, what's going on? And I say, okay, it'll be 35 bucks. It'll be 40 bucks. And then crickets chirping. It's like, did you ask your parents to send you here? And they said, oh, no. Everything's free. Everything's free under Obama until Trump gets elected. Then you have to pay. No, motherfuckers, you've always had to pay. <clears throat> at assholeconsulting.com. Hi, Aaron. It's been a year since I last made a request for your consultation. Once again, I have another inquiry. I'm a 20 year old from Australia who has just completed my first year studying computer science at university. I've discovered I don't want to do that as a career. Instead, I developed a deep passion for aerospace engineering and space in general over the last year. <clears throat> as I was studying it in my spare time during the semester while I maintained a perfect GPA working part-time as a math tutor. The problem is that the aerospace industry in Australia is non-existent, so I would have to move overseas, preferably the U.S. to pursue it. I've always wanted to move to the U.S., so this is not a problem for me, although I don't exactly know how the process works or whether I'd even be able to or not. I'd love to end up working at NASA, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, or SpaceX, etc., but the ITAR regulations won't allow non-U.S. citizens to work in the aerospace industry, or on rockets at least, because rockets are considered advanced weapons technology. So I'm trying to gain citizenship somehow. Do you know how I could get in and when I should attempt this relocation after my degree or try to get involved in student exchange first? All right, let's stop right here. All right, look. Um, one, that is a stupid degree to get, okay? Because whereas there's a lot of math and it's very STEMI, uh, the number of employers, as you pointed out, is very limited. Now, you can maybe go work for Lockheed Martin. You can maybe go work for General Dynamics. You could go work for um, Aston Martin. Rolls-Royce, I think they make engines, General Electric. You could go work in aerospace engineering. Um, but let me, yeah, you, so, but, but this, so aerospace engineering is fine. But if you're going to, I want to work for NASA, is that, okay, stop being a young, stupid fucking kid. Maybe, maybe if you do a really good job as an aerospace engineer, you get your PhD, and you work at General Dynamics or Norman, or not Norman Rockwell, Rockwell Automated, or something like that, then maybe you could get into NASA. But NASA and all these other, you know, they're, they're largely, you know, Boeing, yeah, Boeing will take you. I mean, you don't have to be a U.S. citizen. It would help, but you don't have to be a U.S. citizen. But you got to decide whether or not do you want to work? Because you're saying, like, you really like studying space. All right, well, then you're designing satellites and rockets. You mentioned rockets. All right, that's not commercial airlines. That's not fighter planes. That's not stuff that's going to be in demand. That's whether or not the president and the Congress at the time decide they're going to spend a shit ton of money and whether fucking, um, what's his name? Um, Virgin Airline guys, one of the SpaceX guys, whether they actually get enough fucking funding. Um, so... If you're going to go and change your major to aerospace engineering, expect to work in air, in the airline industry. Something related to the airline industry. If you want to go work in rockets, I say you're kind of fucked. Okay? So how can we get you into working in rockets and work for NASA like every other wide-eyed dipshit millennial kid? Well, not every other because it takes math. You actually are smart and you want to do something with it. All right. <clears throat> so here's what you do. I'd say your first route is to go work for one of the large... Uh, airline companies, uh, not not airlines like, you know, uh, Kiwi or Australian Air or anything like that, but the airline aircraft manufacturers. So your Boeings, Airbus, Lockheed, Rockwell, General Dynamics, get in there. Uh, then, frankly, to work for, for the, the NASA's and all that, and you want to go into space exploration, you're going to need a doctorate. So while you're working, now this assumes you get your degree in aerospace engineering, this assumes that you start working on airplanes or whatever else and then uh, you have a great career and then you also at the same time are getting your PhD in physics, uh, astrophysics, whatever it is that you think at that particular point in time is going to help you land a job over at NASA or SpaceX. Uh, that's kind of a safer route because there is demand. What do aerospace engineers make? Here, let's take a look. Aerospace engineers. BLS. So in the U.S., they make, yeah, on average, $107,000. And a bachelor's degree, typical entry level. Looks like the job outlook is declining, but, you know, 107, that still means there's demand out there. But that's, well, Now, that's median as well. It's median uh, income. So you might have to grovel, beg, and plead. But you're, you're not going to be starving if you go into that field. 
Um, so now whether you'd actually work in, how, how do you end up working? Predominantly a lot of those are in the United States, pretty much all of them, uh, except for Airbus. Uh, so how would you do that? Well, the best thing for you to do would be to come here in the United States as a student, hopefully land an internship here, hopefully ingratiate yourself to one of those airline companies or aircraft manufacturing companies, and then they go and they sign you up for your green card. Now, there's a lot of hope in that. A lot of hope. Um, you know, I think you should go back to computer science, but you can't handle it. You don't like it. All right, fine. Well, you can handle it. You got straight A's, a perfect GPA. So, you, just, you know, that's a good plan B. You may not like it, but it's a good plan B. But with a lot of hope and luck, and it pays off, you come here to the United States. I don't know. You're going to have to talk to not necessarily an immigration lawyer, an immigration bill, if you want to apply for. Uh, a university here in um, the United States, they will tell you what you need to do immigration-wise, papers, visas, student visas, stuff like that. Uh, then, it, it, you know, study really hard, pursue your degree, see if you can get yourself a degree here in the United States. And in the meantime, you're going to have to go and find an employer, like intern or work immediately. I would say, depending on what restrictions you have on your visa, I would say it'd be more important, important to land a job at a aircraft manufacturing company than it would be your degree. Because if you can get in there and you're pursuing your degree, at least then you're like, hi, hello, then you can prove yourself. And then they might sign off on your green card and then like you go ahead and work your way up at Boeing or, or uh, Lockheed Martin. Uh, but then to get to NASA, to make that jump, you're gonna need a doctorate. So then you get your bachelor's degree here in the United States. Hopefully you find a job or an internship with, when you're like right away. Uh, they hire you fresh out of college, uh, you start working, uh, they say, hey, we really need you, I'm not going to mention your name, Bill, uh, and uh, they, uh, they sign your green card, uh, you sl make, slowly make your way to the American citizenship, and then, um, and then after you've worked there for a while, and here's the other thing, they say, well, you're not going to have security clearance. Uh, if you've been working for Boeing, uh, and your boss signs up. I know there's the rules, but they're not always hard and fast rules. But if you have like a, like a, let's say you've been here for 10 years, you're, you're 30 years old now. Uh, you have a 10 year track record at Boeing. Uh, they will know people and they say, hey, you got to go talk to so and so over at NASA or you got to go talk to so and so over at the university or whatever it is. Uh, and they will sign waivers and all that. Because you know what? There sure is a lot of Asians that do a lot of high level rocketry, astrophysics stuff. It's kind of like, hey, wait a minute. Communist China? Really? What? Talk to Bill Clinton about that one. Anyway, so that's, that's as far as my logic takes me, is you go get an aerospace engineering degree. You're not going to be hired at NASA or any of these places anyway with a bachelor's. And while you are working here in the United States, working towards either getting a green card citizenship, marrying a hot chick with big boobs in the United States, uh, you're getting your PhD at the same time, uh, and then that might get you, might, mind you, might get you, into um, uh, NASA or one of the space programs at these uh, at these companies. Uh, about the only other thing I would say though is keep in mind with the the immigration. You're going to be coming here as a student. I would almost once you're a student, go talk to an immigration lawyer and ask them, okay, what do I do here to help this out? Because the route I'm having you take is come here on a student visa, prove yourself to an employer where you're indispensable, and then they will take care of that for you. But there may be some other ways to get U.S. citizenship. But the route I'm going is like you're, you're knocking out several birds with one stone. Your education, your career, work experience, and you're in the industry. Uh, but I would almost come here, first day you come here, talk to an immigration lawyer. If you do find a school that you will attend, and that person will uh, give you a little bit more information on the details of which I am not an immigration lawyer. Uh, but I do know it is through academia that you would get into doctoral programs, which you're going to need anyway. And from there, that's where the recruiting grounds are to get yourself into some kind of space rocket, Jetsons, Star Trek, Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock type of position. Now, I forgot he had another question here. <clears throat> um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Concerning the aerospace industry here isn't up to scratch. I thought of maybe going into a double degree of mechanical engineering with physics or math. No, this is my main dilemma. Do I pursue mechanical engineering for the broader, more employable skill set or to pursue what I'm deeply passionate about, keeping in mind aerospace mechanical degrees are rather similar for the first year or two. I would still go aerospace because we saw before that you're, you're starting, right now you're starting salaries, but salaries are pretty good. 
Um, you know, you can keep your finger on the pulse of the the economy if you think you got to switch to mechanical engineering. So I would I would not I mean, aerospace is fine as long as you're okay working on airplanes. Uh, my second question is about relationships and socializing. I'm an introverted person. While I enjoy socializing, I really don't do it often. I feel like my girlfriend and I will break up soon. I feel depressed about both these things, and I feel like I'm missing on certain social experiences because I'm so focused on my studies and working. I'm wondering if I'll regret working so hard once I'm 25 or 30 and the time has passed, or whether just pursuing my degree working and just focusing on myself is a better option. Any thought on this? Yeah, I regretted. I graduated six months early. I busted my ass off in college, and there was no fucking reason to. Um, I would take your time. Um, yeah, you know, you feel like you and your girlfriend are going to break up soon, so that probably isn't working out. But yeah, you, you're a human and you need to socialize. Now, at the same time, you're not in college to socialize. That, that's a, maybe a fringe benefit or a secondary purpose. You are in college to get a degree and, and get a job and to have a life. Uh, so it's work now, party later. But this doesn't mean, don't do what I did where it was like, full-time school, full-time work. I even took more than full-time school because uh, it was a miserable existence. And I would have gladly sacrificed like a GPA point uh, to attend more parties and relax and, and actually work more so I could have more food I could fucking eat. Um, but yeah, you I can't guarantee you're going to regret it, but yeah, you're only in college. Well, okay, you're technically only in college once when you should be in college at that age. So I'd probably scale back... Um, your girlfriend's a completely different matter, and I wouldn't, you know, you're going to date a ton of girls, and you'll probably break up with a ton of girls, so don't worry about that. But, um, yeah, you you cannot, man cannot live on bread and water alone. You need to have a little bit of human interaction time, so I'd do that. Uh, P.S., I have to thank you sincerely for your books and YouTube. This has really helped me make some very important decisions that ultimately led me to discovering what I really enjoy. Good. I failed high school miserably and started university with hardly any knowledge of science and had no direction in my life. My father left when I was younger and I don't have many people to trust. Da, 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 da. Thank you. Uh, also, can I make a video request? Yeah. Please keep me anonymous. Yeah, which we did. Okay, yeah, so your social life, yeah, you got to have fun, dude. You got to have, not a lot, one day a week, you know, like, and, and you book, you mark it off. Like, nope, this is Friday. I have Fridays off. I don't work Fridays. And you go out with your girlfriend or you chase girls or you hang out with your buddies and play poker, whatever. Um... But yeah, and you could take four or five years to graduate from college, or five or six years. There's, there's no rush. I mean, it's not like the the world economy is booming unless you speak Mandarin, and even then they're scaling back. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so that uh, that is what I recommend. Anyway, all right, that's it. That's all we got. Best of luck to all of you. Toodles.